and lovely to be here. This is my first Inc, and I, I'm in love with Inc community already. Just a wonderful community of people who are accomplished, but also very grounded. Um, thank you also, Sangeeta, for setting up uh, my and Ram's talk so well. Um, I'm going to tell you three mini stories today. The first story is the story, brief history of health of the world. Um, the second one is a story of how we went, fair, uh, went from healthcare in the last few decades to sick care and what is the path forward. So that's the second story. And the third story is the story of innovators, of innovations of health technology in this very country. This is the, the we, we are talk, we're talking about the rest of the century being India's century. This is very much part of that story. This uh, slide right here talks about the you know history of health in, in the world. Um, you know what, what you see uh, on the in the first block is is uh, on the x-axis is the uh, resources and y-axis is the health or health burden of of uh, various parts of the world. You know for thousands of years, 1,000, 1,500 years or so actually, uh, India and China were very rich countries. Their disease burdens were uh, lower because the quality of life was better, whereas pre-medieval, uh, pre-industrial era, Europe and rest of the world didn't have as many resources, so they had not as good health. And post-industrialization, as eco economic progress sort of uh, took, took hold in Europe and then in the US and then Japan, uh, the, the avail availability of resources in those places actually became far more, and the, the disease, disease burden went down, uh, whereas China and India saw places with, with those, those parts of the world. Uh, what is happening now is all of these countries are starting to move in, uh, towards each other. And the future, the post-AI era, in, by 2050 or so, might look like what you see in the third, third uh, visual where the entire world has similar sort of resources, similar sort of disease burden. You just heard from Sangeeta that we have a lot more lifestyle diseases uh, than infectious diseases. Uh, it's a dual burden of disease. Uh, you anticipate the same thing happening potentially to Africa, but maybe we can work together um, with the amount of resources that would be available to get to a moderate level of disease burden and solution. So that's really the, the, uh, a brief uh, history of, uh, of health uh, and the future as well. The, the challenge is, with the way we are today, there are five billion people in the world, five billion out of eight billion, who don't have meaningful access to technology. How did that come about? Well, financial resources is, is, is a part of it. Um, we don't have enough doctors, enough hospitals, enough capacity to take care of these five billion people. By the way, these five billion people are not just people who live in Africa and India and other places. These are also people who live in what is called Global North. There are 100 million people in the U.S., the country I come from, uh, that, that don't have meaningful access to uh, health care. Women, children, aging, people who live in rural areas. So it's a pretty significant problem. It's a global problem, and, and I anticipate this problem will continue to uh, remain uh, uh, very stubborn unless what I say in my third story actually uh, comes about. So this is the second story I want to talk about, how health care went from all about being health, but uh, to, uh, to it being about, uh, about sickness. If, if you notice, the way our healthcare system is set up everywhere is you fall sick and then you interact with that. You don't interact with it when you are well. So you go in into this double-walled edifice that's called healthcare, it's really sick care, and uh, you are, it's very transactional. You are presenting with a particular condition. You get treated for that condition. And after that, you go, go out of this healthcare system, the sick care system, and hospital doesn't know what's happening with you. They, I, don't, I wouldn't say they don't care, but they just don't have the way to engage with you. They have no way to ensure that you remain healthy. So our system has become very much about treating sickness. It's a focus on sickness rather than health and well-being. Okay, so how do we go from healthcare, uh, how, how did we go from healthcare to sick care? The, 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 ironically, technology is the one that actually took us from healthcare to sick care. When we started to have large CT scanners, X-ray machines, X-ray machines were the first, one of the first ones, we had room-sized machines that basically required big hospitals to, to keep them, and the doc patients had to go there. Uh, in the past, the doctor will come to you, the one that's Sangeeta, the future that Sangeeta painted, that used to happen in the past, so it's back to the future. You know, we had neighborhood doctors, neighborhood clinicians, um, and, and now what uh, tends to happen is you basically end up 
for your uh, illnesses, you end up going to large institutions. It's starting to change. It's starting to change here, it's starting to change in the US, it's starting to change other places. And interestingly, it's starting to change because of technology. So very same thing that took you from, you know, uh, in community care, focused on health, to the sick care model that we have, is also going to take, you, take it back to, to home and community. And these are smaller machines, um, you know, uh, wearable devices. I, I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor, for example. So I don't have to go um, to an institution to get my blood draw, to, to track my, my blood sugar. So it's a lot of sort of uh, customer focus or patient focus um, and more, more care at home, more intervention at home, more diagnosis at home is starting uh, to happen, and technology is what's gonna do it. Um, it's gonna take us to health. It's, it's, it's not going to take us from uh, sick care to health care again, but it's gonna take us from sick care to actual health, health and wellness. That's, that's really the future we're talking about. And technology is, is gonna be critical for that. Turns out India has a key uh, to, to, uh, to this problem. It's got a very important role to play. And the, the, the role that India has uh, is health technology innovation. I'm from a program called Stanford Biodesign, uh, which is a health technology innovation program. And 17 years back, when India hadn't yet le learned the, created the startup ecosystem that we have today, they didn't really have a whole, any, any community around health technology innovation. We started a program called Stanford India Biodesign with Ames and IIT Delhi, where we started to train um, really bright young innovators at Stanford. Um, these were Indian innovators. They were brought from India. They were trained for six months and then they were sent back to India. The requirement was that they, they stay in India and they develop innovations in, for India, in India, uh, for India, by Indian innovators. That program gave birth to uh, dozens of such programs across India over the last 17 years. And we now have nearly 1,000 innovators, many of whom in, are in this room, uh, that basically have developed technologies for India in, in, in India, um, and potentially actually using this technology for the future as well. And, and at core of a lot of the work that these innovators do is this biodesign methodology, which is health technology driven by needs, not a health technology chasing a problem. So that's really a, a key. And I, I want to give one very quick example of this. Uh, this is Forest Health. Um, uh, K. Chandrasekhar, who is the founder, CEO of this organization, uh, came up with uh, uh, this idea to bring uh, ophthalmological care to remote parts of India. Um, he worked on this uh, fundus camera, which is far more advanced but very uh, inexpensive, and uh, he built an AI system around it. Over the last 10, 12 years that he has been doing it, he is basically now uh, serving 40 countries, thousands of installations, and millions, actually the number that says 7.5 million lives touched is actually 13 million now. That number needs to be updated. But that's the story of an innovator who struggled through a lot of hurdles, a lot of you know, infrastructure hurdles, data hurdles, you know, a belief in, in an innovator that was born in India, doing innovation for India. This is very difficult. Health technology innovation is not an easy, easy job. But what we have done with him at Stanford Biodesign, we have pre nurtured, mentored uh, him, and dozens of innovators like that, and hopefully hundreds of innovators in the future. But that's, that's the impact that you see. So I, I just want to um, you know, offer kudos uh, to, uh, to innovators like that. And you know, there was a question that was, uh, a phrase that was framed early on, the red pill versus blue pill. I would say it's not going to be red pill, it's not going to be uh, blue pill, it's going to be tricolored pill. 